We've got another scroll box to unbox, so let's start. I already see a pretty artwork. Uh, that's a cute sticker. Triblend Spectrum Noir. They look interesting. Those are four parts. I can't wait to figure out what they are. Okay. Finn. Finn. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. I get it, I get it. That's the lighter color and that's the darkest color. Okay. But they are fine points, so that's a little bit annoying. A brush would be really cool with them. But the colors are really beautiful. A fine liner. A fine, fine liner. You guys know I hate the thick ones. A pencil. And Faber Castell Dust Free Eraser. That would be interesting. I'm gonna try if it's really dust free. And a big candy. The beautiful artwork. <laughs> That's I love the colors. That's so cool. Okay, and marker paper, whole block, that's cool, that's cool, Woo! okay, so what's our prompt word, imaginarium, okay, then let's start imaginarating, I know that was bad, so after this very embarrassing description of what I'm going to do, I welcome you to the voiceover. After reading the small print under the word Imaginarium, which was an explanation, I figured out what I want to do. The word Imaginarium is apparently about a place where you can be creative. So I thought what would be the perfect place for me to create art. And I really love nature and I think she's really inspiring. And sometimes I see pictures of Australia on Instagram and these pictures just want me to be there so bad. So I thought the perfect place would be somewhere in the middle of nowhere, probably in Australia or somewhere where there is beautiful, just left alone nature, which is getting smaller and smaller, I know. And in my imagination, in the middle of a little clearing, there's a rocking chair where I can sit and enjoy the nature and scramble around it. There are all my art supplies where I just can throw paint on the canvas and be as creative as I want to be. While birds around me are singing and little animals come and visit me on my small little imaginarium. That just sounds perfect to me. And because this is really crowded to make and I only have four color shades at least. I decided to make big leaves in front of the viewer's eyes so that I don't have to make that much crowded space and that it looks less wild even though I want it to look wild. Do you know what I mean? An organized wilderness. And I found some cool inspiration for leaves on Pinterest, so I got my inspiration for the big leaves there, but I tried it out with my colors and the first leaf is a little bit less looser and I was just trying stuff out and figuring out how I can make an actual green, because that was the bad part about my plan. I literally want to create an artwork that is in the middle of the jungle, where everything is pure green and I don't even have a green color but thankfully in the first leaf I figured out how to make a green with these because as I forgot and as I shouldn't if you mix blue and yellow you get green so 
in the first leaf I figured that out and I was really happy about it because now I can actually bring a bit more difference into the artwork. But don't worry, I will still have problems with it. You are going to see that later, I promise you. So while we are at it, let's talk a little bit about the markers. These were quite interesting. I never had something like them before. I knew of the chameleon markers, which you can kind of blend like the fine liners we had in a previous crawler box. But I never heard of like three different shades of one color in one marker. And it was really interesting because these were the first markers where I was really able to blend them a bit. That might be me not being really experienced with other markers and mixing or me not being experienced enough to find the right shades to blend or not having enough markers to actually blend them right. But this time it was just way easier for me. At the beginning I said that I was a bit annoyed by the fact that it was a fine tip but to be honest it wasn't that bad. I was able to play around with them pretty easily. And I'm really thankful that they are not a chisel tip, but a brush tip, of course, would have been really, really cool. Although I understand that they would probably be super expensive because you need three brush tips in one marker. As you can see on the leaves, what I went with was a pretty colorful Monstera leaf. One could argue that the ones on the top look a little bit different, like they are different families of that one Monstera kind, because I made them so different. But that was just because I figured out how to actually manage the markers on the first leaf and then I knew how I could do the others. But I don't really hate the leaf on the bottom, so it's not bad. Something that I didn't like that much about the markers was that they were so huge. Not in the length of the markers, more in the width of them, because it was quite hard to hold this ginormous thing in your hand and make precise art with it. Which does not mean that I don't know where they are coming from. They obviously have to put as much ink as you would put in a normal length in just a small part of them. So I get what's the problem. But obviously you don't have to put them in one marker. You could just sell three really close shades of one color in like a kind of set that sticks together like the outline brush markers. You know what I mean? So there's not really a need to stack them on top of each other. But that's really the only bad thing I could say about them. Moving on to the fine liner, that one was pretty cool. It was not the smallest fine liner I knew, but it was a pretty decent width and I was really happy with what I could create with it. As you can see for the rocking chair, I went with a more home built, not super straight lines look because I thought if I live in the middle of nowhere, then I wouldn't need to go to Ikea and buy a perfectly shaped rocking chair. I would just build my own. And that's kind of the look I went for. I may have overworked it a little bit with the lines, but I kind of like it. And as you can see, I didn't put line art everywhere. Unfortunately, I need to change that at the end because it was just getting too colorful, but you are going to see what I mean. But at first, I just wanted to make the whole art imaginarium place with a line art, and the rest is kind of untouched of human nature and just wildly growing without any lines that are perfect. That was kind of my thought. So then let's move on to the paper. In case you were wondered at the beginning when I looked at the paper the first time, I bent over the first cover top thing and it broke off because it was not meant to stay on the whole time and I was just really confused at first because I thought I ruined something. That's where my confusion came from. Basically all I know about the marker paper is that it should not bleed through, which it basically did. But with my mixing it with alcohol technique, I kind of ruined that whole barrier, I think. So it was not working 100% fine, but I think that's my fault. And normally it would work just fine. As I already mentioned, the eraser was not dust free, at least in my interpretation of dust free. It would mean that it would not leave as many little rubber parts everywhere, like a kneaded eraser kind of, but that just didn't happen. It really didn't. Correct me if I'm wrong and dust tree means something completely different, but to be honest it is a decent eraser and I will definitely use it. 
So all in all, even though I'm not a marker person, I enjoyed this box quite a bit. The blending was really great for me. That was a really positive marker experience for me. It does not look quite as sophisticated and cool as the featured artwork, but I think I kind of was able to show what was in my head. To me, that's always really hard and I don't think I'm the only one. I have this perfect picture in my head and then while I'm transferring it to the paper, it, it just gets different more and more. Basically that is because I need to work with what I got. So um, I mean the skills that I have are not as sophisticated and perfect as they should have been for what I imagined. But considering this, I'm quite happy with this artwork. And yeah, that is kind of everything for the artwork. I hope you guys are all fine. I hope you all hang in there. I know it's a hard time. If you are sitting somewhere pretty bored or out of ideas what you can do at the moment. First, I really get you. I know it's hard and I know that feeling of being out of ideas. But I got some for you. First, there's a really cool video Mariah Elizabeth made. She's a really cool YouTuber and she had some great ideas. But in case you are still out of ideas, I have some more. The first one is open a book randomly that you have somewhere lying around. Read this page that you opened and make an artwork based on what is written on that page. That's my first idea. The second one, take one of my videos about scroller box or upgrades and look at the prompt and the colors I used. And now there are two ways you can move on. Either you don't have these boxes and you just use some supplies that are lying around and try the same prompt as I did. Or if you have the boxes at home, use my artwork and try to draw this in your style version of it. If you are for some reason totally done with art, which I can get to, we get to these moments sometimes. As far as I know, at least it's like that in my country and we are at lockdown, you are allowed to go for a walk. So that's an idea. Or if you want to stay safe, just type in yoga video on YouTube and you will find so many videos and just try it out. To me, it was really helpful because they kind of guide you through relaxing. And after that, I'm always pretty relaxed. And the next thing is try baking something. I have a recipe for muffins on my Instagram. It is as always linked in my description. Or you can make something completely different, but we all need sweet things at the moment and you can create it on your own and be proud or terrified of what you created and just have some fun. But I also promised you a problem and as you might see on the top left corner, I went super dark with the markers while trying to get a real green and it just doesn't look good. It looks super strange and it doesn't really look like plants or anything like that. So I went with a different technique for the rest. I made a little green background and then I made some of these palms that I liked in the front. And I think that looks way better. And that's also the reason why I'm now making some line art. I really liked the way the leaves looked, but it was just getting way too confusing especially in the top left, so that's why I changed my mind. Yeah, that's everything for today's video. I hope you feel better now. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!